Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome you here. Glad that everybody's here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed uh, as we begin and we come before the Lord to give him praise and honor and glory and as we bow down to worship before him. I wanted to read to you uh, Psalm 46, verses 1 through 4. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. Lord, we come before you this day to give you praise and honor, to lift up Jesus and to bless his holy name. We pray, O oh God, that you would come into our midst, and according to your promise, as we gather in your name, that you would grace us with your presence, and that we would know it, and that we would understand and see the things you would have for us. O oh, come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Do the work that only you can do, and Lord, take our worship and Translate it into something beautiful for yourself. Lord, all of heaven and earth bow before you, Lord. You, you, there is none like you, Lord. And uh, the rocks cry out if we refuse to. So we come to this time, Lord, to say, bless your name, Lord Jesus. Praise you, O God in heaven. Bless the holy name of our Savior, and we just exalt you in this place. Give us a heart of worship now, Lord, as we come before you. And would you bless this people, those who are here in person and those who are on the Internet, Lord. Bless each one, we pray. Through Jesus, our precious Savior, we ask it. Amen. Amen. So, let's stand and sing together a few songs. We walk with the Lord, the 
light of his word, what a glory he sends on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other A doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. To trust and obey, not a burden, not a burden we sorrow we share but our toil he doth richly repay not a grief nor a loss not a frown nor a cross but is blessed if we trust and obey trust trust and obey for the no other way to be happy of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he showed for the joy he bestows are for them who amen amen trust trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy Sweet. And in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, all of whom will trust and obey. Trust and no other way to be happy in Jesus. To trust, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Let this be the hour 
Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that we can come into your house and bow down before you and worship you. We pray, Lord, that you would give us a heart, Lord, to seek you and to know you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Oh, make your, make your word declared here now as Dave comes. We pray for your anointing over him as he speaks your word word to us that he you have laid upon his heart 
And we pray, Lord, that you would prepare all of our hearts to receive from you the very words, the very oracles of you, Lord God, that we might walk with you, that we might know you better, that we might serve you more completely, Lord, that we might love each other more perfectly, Lord, that we might love this lost and dying world which doesn't understand, Lord. We just pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to minister not only here in this place and to the people who are online, but, Lord, also to those who are around the world who gather in Jesus' name. We pray your blessing upon your body, wherever it is, Lord, and we pray that we could all lift up Jesus, lift him up, and exalt him, Lord, that he might bring others to you. And, Lord, thank you for the young people as they will leave now and go and spend some time together with Miss Jimmy. We pray your richest blessings over them, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to touch their hearts and minds, to draw them to yourself, to teach them and show them your ways, Lord, to reveal yourself to them, Lord, that they may know you as Jesus, as their Savior and Lord, now and forever, we pray. We just thank you for these things, Lord. We bless your holy name. And we commit our time up to you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. to begin this journey you face the future rushes in so relentless its pace decisions overwhelm with each path the unknown questions surround as you wander far from home your mind is resolved your will is set but your truest longings you haven't found yet your steps, uncertain, your way, unknown, this heavy burden carried alone. For too long, you've believed the lies. You don't have what it takes, but a mountain is calling. Your purpose awaits. This is your moment, your testing ground. Here to be forged, your purpose to be found. The fears you now face, you are not the first to bear. Others have come and gone, and their story you share. It is not your own strength, not secure by your own hand. Here lies a foundation, no longer built on the sand. There is one who knows the way who died to set you free. And though you will face trouble, he has promised to never leave. He has set your path, your life he sustains. Take heart, press on. Your struggle is not in vain. His goodness and mercy will follow you all of your days. And when you grow weary in your relentless pursuit, drink from the streams of life, reviving your soul in his truth. The path is never easy as you tread through ice and stone, but don't abandon your way. You will never go alone. His word is your lamp. It will light your way through darkness and doubt Within your heart, it remains. There's beauty in the struggle. If we would learn to see that every mountain is a chance to follow faithfully. In every season, through sun or through storms, his faithfulness, unchanging, his plans for your good in store. So where to begin? New adventures abound. A mountain is calling. 
Your purpose found. That was from Right Now Video. I, I hope you all avail yourself to that. That's paid for by the church. And we offer it to everybody here. All you have to do is ask to get it. There's several people that are administrators and can do that. Collins is an administrator, so he can do that. I can, Paula can. You can call the office and say, I'd like to get that. There's hundreds and hundreds. They've really grown up. And if you... Got a bunch of kids in your house and you want to entertain them. They got all the uh, veggie tales and everything else, cartoony things, all biblical stuff. And uh, so they've got um, Bible studies. They've got Sunday school class. They've got topical things, counseling for marriage or anything you can think of. So... If you want it, just talk to somebody and uh, we can get an invite to you. What we do is we invite you, uh, or actually right now media invites you guys to become members. So anyway. So I haven't, I haven't preached for a while. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind right now. I don't know, it's been a while. You know, the, the pandemic hit. And we closed the church for a little while, and we uh, were doing the sermons and the worship and everything from home, and we had to figure out how to produce all that and uh, post it, and then we decided we were going to come back here, and we had to figure out how to do a live broadcast, so we're broadcasting live today, and uh, um, so... I was involved with, with getting some of the hardware and figuring out how to do stuff. Um, really thought that I was pretty indispensable. So I was up there instead of here. Um, and then a couple of the younger people at church came to me and said, you know, you really don't know that much about this stuff. And so I kind of turned it over to them. It's been, been awesome. A little, little humbling to know that I wasn't essential to getting the church services here to go. But um, that, <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way stuff goes at churches, you know. The, the future generation starts to take on responsibilities and, and become that. And uh, I had a discussion with my wife and we were trying to decide what the future generation is, because she thought I skipped a generation, because Alana and Skyler and some of the guys are helping do the tech ministry, and things that took me hours to figure out how to use, they go, oh yeah, you know, I'm like, okay. So, um, so I want you to understand what I'm talking about younger people, youth, um, let's say 50 and under. How's that? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, yeah, the youth. So, so if you're in that, you know, you're, if, you're, if you're Jimmy or Collins or Tom, we're old guys, we can't get away from it. So, um, All right, so I'm going to start with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Um, and I don't know the page number in your Bible, so. And you were dead in your, your offenses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all previously lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, 
just as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that the ages to come he might show the boundless riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by you have been for by grace you have been saved through faith, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. I can, okay, so Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you for this time. And Lord, uh, I just ask that, that you speak through me and that your word be Revealed today, in Jesus' name, amen. I can anticipate there's going to be a rebirth of First Christian. Because of COVID-19 and today's culture, we're kind of the faithful remnant of the church we were before the pandemic hit and even before that. So this few here today are concentrated, faithful believers of Jesus Christ. I include those who are watching live on the video. Because now it's time for a younger generation to be involved with the ministry in the leadership capacity. We have some very capable young men and women. We all need to heed God's call on our lives. And we all have a call upon our lives by God. And our mature membership need to mentor younger men and women in our church to walk with God and hear him. To let them know how this generation is serving the Lord. What does an elder or deacon really do in this church? George's title is head greeter, but he does so much more. He's our barista, the head of a homeless ministry, a homeless coffee ministry, um, wedding coordinator, and just, just to name a few things. We have a worship team, a tech crew, Sunday school teachers, prayer warriors, the list goes on. God said, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. God's made you with a purpose. He has a plan. It's probably not your plan. <laughs> but it's the best plan. One God made for you. And God can ensure that you achieve that plan through his power and wisdom as long as we are willing to follow his lead each and every step of the way, regardless of his requests. And if you look in the Bible, he asked people to do some pretty wild things. Things that people can't do. There's a reason for that. So that we don't take credit for something that God's doing in our life. So you ever been ever think that you're not hearing from God? Ever think that you are faithfully waiting on Him to give you a direction in your life? Go ahead, God. I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. Just, just say something. Anything. Just say something. He, 
You want to use your talents to minister in his name. God doesn't see you through your eyes or your friend's eyes. He doesn't concern himself much about your career, your age, your gender, skin color, or anything like that. You are his child. Whether you think of him as your heavenly father or not, you're still his child. God made you with a purpose in mind, and he sees you through the eyes of what you are capable of becoming. <sighs> so you're not hearing from God lately. Wonder what's up with that. Other people seem to be hearing from the Father, but not you. God said he loves you, and he also says that love is patient. Maybe God asked you a question and he's waiting for the answer for years. Maybe he's given you the first step in a ministry that he wants you to do. He wants you to take the first step, but you didn't, it didn't fit your agenda. Don't make like you don't have your own agenda. So you're just waiting for God to change his mind. Or maybe God is talking to you, but you're not listening. Or the world around is so loud, it's drowning him out. I was a musician when I first came and visited this church. I was a lead singer and a usually a bass player. I joined the choir here because I wanted to. Not because God had a called me to minister to the masses through music. Didn't make it a bad thing, but it wasn't God's calling on my life. But it was kind of fun being in the back row in the choir. Actually, I wasn't quite in the back row. That's where the bass is at. I was a tenor. So what did he have in mind for me? Little teeny things. Just little baby steps. He knew I was a slow learner. He knew that if he reviled, revealed a grandiose plan to me, I would go probably no thanks. I was always worried that God would ask me to be a missionary and go to a foreign country. I like this country. Okay? So being a missionary wasn't on my agenda. I've had my sit and pout moments when I thought God had made a poor choice for my life. But in the end, he always, he was always writer than me. So let's look at some Bible characters because there's some times where God has spoken to people in the Bible and it's like, whoa, that's really a wild story. So the first one comes pretty early in the Bible. It's Noah. Here's a guy, got a family, working the land, and God called him to build a boat. And I always remember the comedy where, routine where he's going, what's a boat? What's a cubit? What's all this stuff? You know, he didn't, he didn't have skills. It wasn't like God looked over the world and found the best boat builder that was going to save the human race from total destruction. He found somebody that would do what he was told to do. So in Genesis 6, 7 through 22, and this is kind of the Reader's Digest version because that's a whole lot of scripture, and I got some other people I want to talk about. So 
Then the Lord said, I will wipe out mankind who I have created from the face of the land, mankind and animals as well, and crawling things, and the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Then God said to Noah, The end of humanity has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of people, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. And you shall make the ark with compartments and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's that big. Yeah. Colin said 450 feet. So it's a big box. Its width is 50 cubits and its height is 30 cubits. You shall make a window in the ark and finish it to a cubit from the top and put the door of the ark on the side and you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which there is the breath of life. Under heaven, everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. So Noah did these things according to everything that God had commanded him, so he did. Just imagine hearing from God, and he wants, he wants Astrid to build a boat. Not a boat builder? No. I don't, think, I don't think Noah was a boat builder either. Maybe he was a box builder. Because I think he kind of built this rectangular structure and he waterproofed it and he hoped for the best. Because it wasn't his area of expertise. He wasn't a zookeeper. And yet... He had one of every animal on earth. I don't know why he had mosquitoes come along, but, you know, yeah. To feed the bats with, I, I don't know. But anyway, but, but Noah, is, according to the Bible, Noah said, okay, I'll do it. You know, just amazing. It took years. He didn't have a place where they build boats. He didn't have a dock. He didn't have a lake. He didn't have anything. He was just on dry land, and he's building this boat, and I'm sure everybody around there wondered what in the world Noah was doing. He was building this really big barn, but he was covering it with pitch. You know, maybe you don't do that with barns. Maybe, I don't know if back then if you had paint, maybe pitch is what you had. I don't know. But let's talk about somebody else. Let's talk about Gideon. He's pretty fun. Gideon was the youngest boy of a family. I don't know how young that was. But he said himself, I'm just the youngest kid. And it was a kind of a poor family, the least in his town that he was at, according to him. It says, and the angel of the Lord, and this is in Judges. I had to, something. Anyway, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, valiant warrior. Something's up. And then the Lord looked at him and said, Go in this strength of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midian. 
have I not sent you? But he said to him, O Lord, I am, how am I to save Israel? Behold, my family is the least in Man Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's house. Yet the Lord said to him, I will certainly be with you, and you will defeat the Midian as one man. Kind of a preview of things to come. So, the Lord said to him, Peace to you, do not be afraid, you shall not die. The Gideon, then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and named it, The Lord is Peace. Now I get into some tough words here, some names. Then all the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the people of the east assembled together, and they crossed over and camped in the valley of Jerzeel. So the Spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing, and he blew a trumpet, and the Abazurites were called together to follow him. And he sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Manasseh, and they also were called together to follow him. And he sent messengers to Asher, Zebulun, and Nepali, and they came to meet with him. Then Gideon said to God, If you are going to save Israel through me, as you have spoken, behold, I am putting a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry all around the ground, then I will know that you will save Israel through me, as you have spoken. And it was so. Then he got up early the next morning and wrung out the fleece, and he wrung out the dew from the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not let your anger be against me, so that I may speak only one more time. Please let me put you to the test only one more time with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, and let there be dew all, on the, all around on the ground. And God did so that night, for it was dry only on the fleece, and the dew was on all the ground. Then Zerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him got up early and camped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. Got that? I don't. So, and the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to hand Midian over to them. Otherwise, Israel would become boastful, saying, My own power has saved me. Now, therefore, come proclaim in the hearing of people, and saying, Whoever is afraid and worried is to return and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 from the people returned, but 10,000 remained. Trim it down a little bit there. Then the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are still too many, bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. So it shall be that he of whom I say to you, This one shall go, and this one will go with you. But everyone of whom I say to you, this one shall, shall not go with you, he shall not go. Okay. So he brought the people down from the water, and then the Lord said to Gideon, You shall put everyone who laps the water with his tongue like a dog into one group, and everyone who kneels down to drink in another group. Now the number of those who lapped, putting their hands down, hands to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people who kneeled down to drink water 
And the Lord said to Gideon, I will save you with the 300 men who lapped and will hand the Midianites over to you. So have all the other people go, each man to his home. So the 300 men took the people's provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and Gideon dismissed all the others, men of Israel, each to his tent, but retained the 300 men. And the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. Now on the same night came about that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have handed it over to you. But if you are afraid to go down, go with Purah, your servant, down to the camp, so that you will hear what they say. And afterwards, you will have the courage to go down against the camp. So he went down with Purah and his servant to his servant to the outposts of the army that was in the camp. Now the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the people of the east were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts, and their camels were without number, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. When Gideon came, behold, a man was relating a dream to his friend, and he said, Behold, I had a dream. A loaf of barley bread was tumbling into the camp of Midian, and it came to the tent, and it struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent collapsed. And his friend replied, This is nothing other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has handed over to him Midian and all the camp. I don't know how he got that from that loaf of bread, but it's, it's what what Gideon was hoping to hear, I guess. I guess that was a good thing. So, so God handed it over to Gideon, and Gideon had his servant with him, and the battle was won without a battle, I guess. It was with a loaf of bread somehow. But, you know, there's 300 guys that started out as 30,000 some people and got whittled down to 300, and those guys weren't even there. It was just Gideon and his servant were there, and God delivered the Midianites and the Amalekites and the, all the other kites to to Gideon. And he did it that way because he wanted to see Gideon be obedient, and he didn't want Israel to be able to boast that they had done this thing. They had to admit that it was God who performed this miracle. And so in our lives, sometimes things happen, and we're like, I'm pretty good at this, aren't I? I'm, I'm awesome. Look what I did. I did that. But is it you? Are you walking with God? Are you hearing God? Is God telling you what to do? Is God walking before you? If so, maybe, maybe he prepared the way. Maybe he did the work. Maybe he did the hard things and you just walked through after he was already taken care of. So let's, let's look at somebody that didn't, Say okay to God. Okay? Jonah. So in Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 20, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah and the son of um, Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the, the great city, and cry out against it, because their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish, and from the presence of the Lord. So he said, well, God's over here. I'm going to go over here so that, so that I'm not. He's a prophet, right? 
So he kind of knows about God. You know, so he's running away from God. I know you guys have never, never done anything like that, I'm sure. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship that was going to Tarshish, paid the fare and boarded it to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. However, the Lord hurled a great wind on the sea, and there was a great storm in the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors became afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and they hurried the car and they hurried the cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten the boat for them. But Jonah had gone below into the stern of the ship and laid down and fallen asleep. That's a good place to slip, sleep in a boat is either the bow or the stern. That way you get that maximum rocking motion. But anyway, so the captain approached him and said, How is it that you are sleeping? Get up, call your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. And each man said to his mate, Come, let us cast lots so that we may find out on whose account this catastrophe has struck. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us now, on whose account has this catastrophe struck us? What is your occupation? And where <coughs> excuse me, do you come from? What is your country? And from what people are you? So he said to him, Well, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men became extremely afraid and said to him, How could you do this? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. <coughs> I don't know if he really told them, but, you know, God, God can work through people who aren't even believers. <coughs> and they can influence us in a way to turn us back to the Lord. Because those guys all had their own gods. And I doubt, I doubt if they were any of the Hebrew god. So he said to him, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. Because I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. However, <coughs> the men rode desperately to return to land, but they could not because the sea was becoming even stormier again. Then they cried out to the Lord and said, We earnestly pray, O Lord, do not let us perish on account of this guy, this man, and do not put innocent blood on us, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. <coughs> Excuse me. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Then the men became extremely afraid of the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. <coughs> and the Lord designated a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish for three days and nights. So it's kind of tough. Running away from God doesn't really work very well. Um, and if you think that you're off in a room by yourself, you're probably not by yourself. God's there. So this is a tough time for our church. Oh, look at you. Deacons at work. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Angela. Who among you is willing to invest their time and their wisdom and to give these young men and women of First Christian Church a future here? I'm going to ask you if you're willing to
to mentor someone who's younger than you are. And again, I'm saying 50 or less is younger. Um, then stand up right now. If you're willing to mentor someone, stand up. I'm, st I'm standing too. So. All right. So, if you're young at this church, under 50, or 50 and under, maybe you see someone that you'd like to learn some stuff from. So, they're standing, you can stand up and walk over and introduce yourself right now. You can do it. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry. I can stand here for a long time. Donna, you can choose Alice right there. She's close to you. She's not looking at me. Well, I want you to know the, take note of who these people are. In Matthew it says, Jesus said, as a matter of fact, and you will even be brought before governors and kings on my account as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they are handing, handed you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who are speaking, but it is the Spirit of your Father who is speaking to you. So there's another mentor, huh? The Holy Spirit. You can come on up. I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessing on this time. Lord, as the worship team is coming up to, uh, to uh, play invitation, I just ask that young people be encouraged that this is a church that will embrace you and, and bring you into leadership and uh, to uh, start a new generation of this church because the old guys, that, I mean the elders, I'm sorry, the elders that run this church are just that, they're elder. So we want to hear from you guys too. Okay.
We're going to uh, have communion now, and we invite you to come forward as the music plays to receive the elements and hold them, and we'll share together. Also, I should note that we have the offering plates up front here, so if you have a tithe or offering that you wish to bring to the Lord today, then that's a good time to do that. Just drop it in there while you're getting the uh, elements of communion. And now we're going to play a song. Welcome you to come forward. Trying to break this apart without uh, spilling grape juice everywhere. You know, um, David was just talking about being obedient to the Lord, or in fact, the price of being disobedient to the Lord in the case of Jonah. You know, he ended up with a great revival in Nineveh as a result of his ultimate obedience to God, but in the interim, he spent three days in the belly of a great fish. I don't know. That just seems kind of disgusting to me. So uh, um, I don't even like cleaning fish because of the smell on my hands that's hard to get rid of. Imagine being in the belly of a fish for three days. Yikes. But right here on this table, it says, this do in remembrance of me. Every time we take communion, we have the opportunity to be obedient to the command of our Savior and Lord, to do this in remembrance of him. And when we remember him, we don't just remember the fact that he was a Nazarite and may have had long hair. 
we don't remember just the fact that he walked around uh, the area of Palestine uh, surrounding Jerusalem and over to Caesarea. No, what we remember is that he gave his life for us, that he took upon himself willingly the sins that we committed, and he who knew no sin was separated from his father on our behalf because of sin for the first time in his eternal being he was separated from the father so today as we take this cup with the bread in it and as we contemplate what he has done for us let us give thanks for he said this is my body given for you moreover we know from the word that it says that by Jesus stripes we were healed and our sins were forgiven. Curses were broken as he hung on that tree for our behalf. So today, for all of us, I just say, Heavenly Father, I pray that every curse spoken against us be broken today through the work of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Father God, I pray for healing for every hurt, for every uh, sickness or illness or infirmity. I pray, Father God, that you would deliver your people today as we participate in this commandment of your Son, Jesus, to us. Oh, Lord God, we receive from you today healing and deliverance from the works of the enemy in our life as we take this bread in Jesus' name. Let us share together. It says in Luke chapter 22, in the same way, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of a new covenant given for you. What is that new covenant? The people prior to the church age served a God who was over there and they were here. And when they wanted to meet with God, they made the trip to Jerusalem and made offerings before the temple, in the temple and sought God's favor there. But as a result of what Jesus did for us, shedding his blood at Calvary, when people ask me, where is God? I say, right here. Because God has come to be with us, and we are one with him. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, your spirit has been renewed through Christ and is now one with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. You are more than what you look like in the mirror because you are a king and a priest or a queen and a priest in the kingdom of Almighty God. Let us rejoice and give thanks today. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood shed for us. Praise the Lord. So there's been a little trouble. Paula's son got the COVID last week, so she wasn't able to be here this past week. And uh, our little pianist, Alyssa, has got come down with it too, so you'll see me with a, a mask and you won't see much of me at Fellowship Hour. Because uh, even though I've been vaccinated and all that, I just am having, having that. Um, some people have asked some questions about the air conditioner, and we have had some trouble with the air conditioner. We're trying to find out whether that's something that, the, that uh, either insurance or FPNL will cover for us because it seems to have arisen out of an electrical problem. But I would ask you to pray as to how the Lord might have you if, if he leads you to, to, um, to contribute to uh, putting in some new compressors in our air conditioner. So I wanted to just bring that to you and make you aware of that. And so let us, let us pray today. Lord, we know that this, this pandemic continues to vex doctors and people all around the world, and even those who are careful sometimes, Lord, fall to it. So we just pray, oh God, against it, and we pray, Lord, that you would bring it to an end. 
Lord, I don't know what the purpose of it all has been. We heard about purpose today, but we thank you for it. For you, Lord, know what you're doing, and we trust you. We have placed our faith in you, and we are grateful, Lord, for the fact that you have given us the ability to walk with you. We pray, O oh God, that you would be um, with those who are suffering, Lord, from it. One of my clients. Lord, we pray that you would also be with those who have lost loved ones, Lord, also friends of mine. And I pray, O oh God, that you would just comfort those and give us, as your believers, a chance to speak words of life and encouragement and love and compassion towards them. Lord, we thank you for the purpose of the church. We pray, O oh God, that you would just continue to allow your kingdom to move forward and we offer you ourselves, Lord, as a part of it. Here we are, Lord. Use us. Whether as mentors or mentees, we pray, O oh God, that you would just have your perfect way. We just thank you. Now, Lord, I pray that over these people, and I say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Now and forever we pray. Amen. Amen. One more song. Come on downstairs. There's, there's some good food that's going to be prepared for us, but uh, you're welcome to stay or head on down. We look forward to, to meeting you and fellowshipping with you downstairs. Years of spending vanity and pride. Very not my Lord was crucified. Imploring turn to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Heart and air was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I give in Jesus everything. Now I gladly know. Raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Born and air was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down. The God did spend at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Hard and air was multiplied to me. There my burden so from Multiply to me. 